Hello, everybody. My name is Valeria Ferrari, and I, I'm very glad to present this webinar because it's an important webinar about the state of art on uh, in, prosthetic, in prosthetic dentistry. We will see with Dr. Luca Rortensi how to use Ethan in the diagnosis and the treatment of uh, prosthetic cases. And I'm glad to introduce you, Dr. Rortensi, because he's one of the, our key opinion leaders. And uh, he is based in uh, the city center of uh, Bologna. He has a, a private practice and is also a teacher in the uh, University of Catania. As you know, if you have any technical issue, you can uh, write them on chat and uh, I will try to fix it. And if you have any questions, you can also write them in uh, on chat. And we will read the question only at the end for not interrupting the speaker. So thank you again for being here and for your time. And I hope you enjoy because Dr. Rotensi is a very, very great doctor. So, okay, Lucas, we partire. Okay, thank you very much, Valeria. And thank you, Roberta. I close the window here. And I'm so happy uh, to stay here with you and uh, with uh, all the uh, uh, Titan group. And uh, I'm a dentist, you know, and uh, I work in Italy. And uh, I use Titan in my daily practice. Uh, I use electromyography in my daily practice because I think it's a, a, good, uh, uh, a good device to have during my first visit and during my therapy. I am a prosthodontic and uh, my therapy is fundamental uh, uh, a prosthodontic uh, therapy, and uh, I I want this type of device during my activity. I want to to know more about the patient, but uh, it's not uh, it's easy to use a uh, titan and it is easy to understand uh, this type of device. Now, oh, okay, sorry, okay. Now, uh, you can see, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, you can see the, the use of this uh, device in my daily practice. This is uh, my patient. And uh, I have uh, four groups. I use it uh, on uh, the temporal muscles and on uh, masseter's muscles. And uh, it's so easy to, to use it. And uh, it's very important because I don't want to know something more about the function of the patient. And uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, if you have a long bird, it's not uh, easy to use this instrument, but you can use it in this situation, uh, no problem for this situation in the species. And um, you can use it in the same position, and uh, uh, you can use it during your first visit or during your therapy. Today, I want to show you, I would like to show you, to share with you uh, two clinical cases. The first case, is a, a fixed case of prosthodontic. Uh, the second is a uh, hover denture. And uh, uh, I want to show you everything about the digital workflow, about the, this uh, device. Um, as you can see on the screen, it's simple to understand the use of this instrument. You have uh, uh, some measures and you can control this measure at the beginning of the therapy, at the end of the therapy and during the therapy. And uh, I think it can help you uh, to understand better the patient. You have uh, um, some indices for titan, and uh, you have, uh, for example, the value of the uh, um, temporal muscles, the value of masseter muscles, the value of the, um, the, the position of the mandible in the space. And uh, now we have uh, a lot of literature about uh, this uh, device. Uh, you can see it on uh, PubMed. This is an example. This is a systematic review. So, um, Titan and electromyography, it isn't a new, a new uh, in the a news in the in the dentistry. Now we know uh, we we use this uh, device from uh, since uh, for me uh, since uh, uh, 2015, and uh, this instrument is. Uh, um, now in the literature, you, you can read uh, um, a lot of literature about it, uh, a lot of articles about it, and uh, we can do, uh, it is a good device for our practice. Um, and so you have uh, uh, some indices, uh, and I, I prefer to, 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 look, uh, to look, look at some indices like, for example, impact. 
like for example uh, the, the the force of the single muscles now so when i have the patient in my dental office i begin the first visit and then i use uh, some devices uh, for example i use uh, my uh, reference camera to to get uh, more or uh, some photos of the patient i take impression with uh, my digital uh, intramural scanner and i use a titan in the same visit why i use titan I use titan in the first visit because I want to know the state of the muscles of the patient, the state, the situation of the patient at the beginning. This is very, very important for me. And uh, I, um, I don't use titan, for example, when I know that patient has pain in uh, some teeth. So I wait to use titan in a second appointment. But in the first appointment, if I can use it, I use it during my activity, during my the first visit. And I want to know more about the uh, temporal muscles, about the masseter muscles. So you have four probes, you put the so with four probes on the skin. Uh, the first thing is uh, the, the data that you can get is uh, the same for the same patient during the, your uh, activity, but uh, the instrument uh, can uh, change the situation if you have a, a old woman or a young woman. So you can uh, um, record the state of the patient. So um, during the first visit, for example, in these cases, I take this measure. And for me, the index more important for me is the impact index. Because I want to know, for example, the, the force of the patient. It's very important for me during my activity to know the, the force of the patient because I want to, to do a plane of treatment. I want to make a, a plane of treatment uh, specific for this patient, specific for this situation. So uh, I use data in first visit and I want to know everything about the state of the patient. Uh, I think an important thing, I can't and I don't want to, uh, to use Titan to, to get the central relation. Titan is a, a device that I use to know more about the muscles. If I want to, 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 um, to look for a good position for the mandible, I have to use my, uh, my school, my idea, my clinic experience, uh, for example, uh, um, for example, I, uh, I can find a central relation with a uh, biplane, but I use this device to check this position. I use this device to control if the muscles uh, are working well in, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this position. For example, this patient is a male, uh, for me, a young male, because uh, I have an old patient because I am postdoctic, so I work on uh, old patients. But this patient, I don't know if he is a, a very strong patient or a low force, a low force patient. For me, uh, it's uh, not so easy to know this, uh, uh, this data. So I check the patient on the face, I visit the patient. I can understand if, uh, for example, is a brachyfacial patient or square face or long face, but uh, in the first phase, in the first visit, I control the face of the patient. I I do um, teleradiography, and I want to measure the, the the mandibular angle because it is very important for me. It's fundamental to know this angle because I know um, if you have a um, short, a, um, a low angle uh, near close uh, 90 degrees, you have a, a brachyfacial in your office. If you have a, a long face, you have a big angle, for example, 140. And I know this with teleradiography. And I know if you have a short face, you have a strong patient. But sometimes you don't know very well if, this, if uh, for example, this patient is strong or no strong. But Titan can help has in this way. I um, I do the exam on the patient, and I have this information. 
As you can see on the left or right uh, side of the screen, you can see this in the near my arrow, I think now a laser here. You can see this safe index. This index is the impact factor. For me, it's very important. But here you can see you have a, a bigger force, a bigger uh, work of the right part of the patient. You are the same uh, for the masseteer, and you have a, 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 you don't have a good position of the mandible. You can see here, and you have a, some problem, okay? And you have a low impact. You have a low impact, for example, when you have a, a low vertical dimension. But not this situation is not always true. So impact is the index that measure the force of the patient, and uh, um, the, um, it's uh, like a, um, a guide for me to understand better the vertical dimension of the patient. But if you have an impact lower than 85, you have an impact um, no good for this patient. I prefer to have uh, this range of impact. Uh, and uh, I can improve this, uh, this uh, data with uh, uh, my therapy, you know, but it's not always, uh, you can have, you can't have this situation uh, always. For example, in this case, this patient comes in my dental office and asks to me to have a, a, a visit, to have, a, to improve the function because he has uh, some teeth broken, and uh, he wants uh, to improve the, the function of the, his uh, mouth. Okay, I look, uh, uh, I look at this uh, this patient, and uh, I said to him, uh, I think you have you are a strong man. I think you are a strong man, and I have to change my therapy in this case because I have to improve the resistance of my, for example, ceramic. I, I don't use, uh, for example, feldspathic in this case, I use uh, zirconia monolithic, monolithic zirconia, because I know it's uh, more resistant than uh, feldspathic ceramic. But I want to study this patient, no? So I, I did the exam and uh, I look the screen and uh, I saw, oh my God, the impact was uh, 307. So three times more the normality. And uh, I thought, I did a mistake. I, I made a mistake. I, I have a problem. I had a problem during the exam. But the, this type of uh, device is so important because if you have this data, um, it's totally uh, a very good information for the future therapy. So I... Uh, I did a, a new exam on this patient, and this is the result. This is the impact after the new exam after five minutes. So I have an impact 395, so three, four times more than the normality. So I called my assistant and I said to her, please look with me at the screen and the situation because I have a problem with the, the, the titan. I think I have a problem. No, I don't have a problem. I don't have. Because you can see on the screen, the last exam, the impact was 406. And for me, it's very, very dangerous this patient because if you want to build something inside of this mouth, I want to build, a, I want to make a, make a, a prosthesis, I have to follow this data. I have to follow this measure. I can't uh, forget this measure. And the, um, the device, the Titan, said to me, OK, please, doctor, pay attention, because the situation is, for me, eh, for me, is dangerous. So what I do in this case? In this case, I know I have a problem. I, I check the patient, and uh, my uh, prosthesis is uh, stronger than the normality. I improve the, the, the type of um, the connection. I improve the number of implants, uh, and uh, um, 
I do uh, more attention than before or than another patient. So for me, this index is so important. But if you uh, watch the screen, you can see the other measures are failed, are uh, no good for the patient. For example, the masseteer work, okay? Now, this is the first clinical case, and I want to show, to share with you my experience on, uh, on this patient uh, with the titan. This lady, this, uh, sorry, this um, patient uh, came in my dental office in 2016 and uh, uh, tell me uh, that uh, she um, doesn't uh, eat very well. She has uh, pain uh, in the mandible. She has pain uh, about the teeth, some teeth. She has pain in the neck. I don't want to, 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 to talk about the neck, but sometimes I think if you have a big problem in your muscles, if you have a big problem in your muscles in the face, you have sometimes uh, a problem in the neck. Sometimes, no, not always. So I visit this patient and uh, I control this patient and uh, I see um, a level, a uh, plane, a front forward plane and a occlusal plane is not perfect but it's not important. I check inside the mouth this patient. I take some pictures of, the, of, of this patient and I begin the first visit. This situation is not important only for uh, the aesthetic of the patient. For example, I, I like to, to control the nasolabial angle. I want to uh, control this angle to improve the aesthetic of the patient, but I want to control the overbite and the overjet of the patient. And I want to control, I want to study the um, mandibular handle. For me, it's very important. So I visit the patient, okay? And I uh, visit the patient and I, I look at inside the mouth and I see she hasn't, she, don't, uh, she doesn't have uh, teeth in the posterior part of the mandible. So this is very dangerous for the occlusion. I want uh, a lot of teeth. I want the same teeth uh, in the patient when uh, she is she uh, is in alpha or when she is in a prosthetic situation. So in this situation, I I don't have uh, some teeth. The patient um, has a big overjet. Um, and the overbite is not good. The position of the mandible, mandible I think, is not good for this patient. And uh, she um, tells me about pain in the upper jaw, in the upper jaw in the right side, and the lower jaw in the left side. This is the X-ray uh, exam, and uh, you can see uh, on the screen some problem, for example, some teeth with problem. Now, if you do the, your exam with teeth and at this moment, you have uh, the value, the measure of the, of the machine of the teeth is not real, really true because the patient has pain. So when you uh, take the exam, when you do the exam to the patient, if uh, she uh, feels pain inside the mouth, she, can, she can't uh, um, eat very well. She can't uh, bite very well uh, my uh, roll, cotton roll. This is another part of my first visit. I check the uh, mandible handle. I want to know if the patient is a... Um, brachyfacial patient or mesofacial patient or uh, dolicofacial patient. In the, this case, is a mesofacial patient, but I won't know it. I won't know. Please look the, the neck here in this, in this image. I think it's not a good image of the neck. And after this first part of the visit, where I do a, a cephalometric exam to the patient, I take some pictures of the patient. I take some pictures of the patient first visit because I want to know 
if I can help the patient and I want to share with her some information about the future of the setting, not the function. The function is a, um, I follow this type of uh, uh, exam after a few minutes after these photos, uh, when I take the exam uh, with the teacher. Now you can see, as you can see on the screen, I have a, a bad, very bad occlusal plane. I don't want it. I don't want it at the final of my therapy. And the level and the here, the smile is not good. So she uh, she told me, uh, Dr. Luca, please, I want to improve my function. I want to improve my study of the face. Uh, please give me a solution. And now, so I took two pictures of the patient with these special glasses with a reflex camera. And uh, I, I did a uh, virtual planning. Uh, this was my design on the patient in this uh, software. It's not important, but I want to know something more about the study of the patient because I am uh, um, I'm doing a first visit and I want more, more uh, information for this patient. At the end of this uh, uh, of this uh, of this exam, I I collect more data. For example, digital impression. So I took two pictures in the first visit. I I took um, two uh, digital impression and I did this exam with data. For me, it's very important in the first phase of the first visit. So I want to know something more about the patient. Okay. And now I control the exam. So you can see on the screen the exam of this patient. And you can see here the impact is so low. It's impossible, right? Because she has pain. When she, um, when the, when she, uh, she bites on the cotton rolls, she has pain. So I take this exam in this situation in the first visit, but I want to do the exam after a uh, few days or a uh, few weeks when I improve the situation of the uh, patient inside the mouth, when I improve the oral health of the patient. So when I extract some teeth, so uh, I, um, I have, so I, um, I want that when I produce this new exam, the patient can, can uh, bite very well cotton rolls. Oh, you can see here, you can, you all can see on the screen, this is a, a, a signal, red signal. If you have a red signal, you have a problem on the exam. So you have the value, the measure are not well for this patient. Or you can see a, a, green, a green traffic light or a signal, or uh, yellow, depending. The best is a green. Uh, now, uh, this is the first visit, now I changed something, I, I did some uh, therapies inside the mouth, and now, oh, ah, sorry, why she can't uh, bite very well? Because she has a problem here, she has a problem in the other part of the mouth, so it's impossible to have a good exam in this phase, but it's important to have. I want, in first visit, I want always this type of exam. Now, the impact is so low, it is a strange, strange situation. So, I extract some tooth and I put inside the mouth um, a bite, a bite plane, a simple bite plane, because I want to control, to have a, um, a number, a big numbers of contacts. So, now I can control the position of the mandible with bite, by this bite with titan so i can use titan with the, the bite plane i don't use titan with uh, um, a bite uh, like gum i prefer rigid uh, bite plane i don't want a bite like a, a piece of gum i i prefer a rigid bite plane i control the occlusion of the patient i control the situation uh, of the contacts and i measure, I can have a new measure with theta in this phase. I don't want to have a centric 
position now. I want to to find something uh, where I can build, I can make a new uh, temporaries. Now, I produced some temporaries in the final position that I found, and the key for me, the therapy, is the, the provisional. I use titan during this phase. I don't use titan at the hand of my uh, appointment. I prefer to use a titan at the beginning because the patient is not uh, tired. So if you want to use titan, for example, when I uh, use, I have a, a temporary on the patient, I use titan at the beginning of my appointment. And uh, I control the patient in the second, in the second appointment always at the beginning never 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 at the hand of your appointment never at the hand of your, of your appointment on the your chair so this is the temporary phase i change the occlusion of the patient and now i don't know if this position is correct i don't know if this position is uh, uh, correct for the patient for this patient and now, after I uh, used this uh, temporary, I did a new exam on this patient. And now I have a, a new exam, a new result. But look with me this result. So now you have a green sign. And this is very important because uh, the patient now is better than before with temporary. And now I know it. It's not my idea. It's, uh, I measure, I can measure this better situation. And this is very important for my activity. And I have a good situation of the temporal muscles. I have a good center situation of the masseter. The baricentrum is the correct. And uh, I have a, a good impact because the impact is uh, in the normality range, right? Now, I don't want to change this situation because if you control the patient today or uh, tomorrow, but I want the same situation after one month. So I use the temporary on the patient for one month, two months, or more, depends. And uh, I want the same level of, of quality of exam. When I have the same exam for one week, two weeks, or for two months, I know this is a good situation, a good position for the patient. I want to share this position with my dental laboratory. This is a simple surgical phase because you know, you remember the plan, the cruiser plan uh, wasn't uh, correct. So I want to change the level of the gamma. I want to change the parabolas of the patient. I want to change, uh, I want to improve the aesthetic of the anterior part of the mouth. So. I did the surgery and uh, I, with a, a, a digital smile design protocol. I use uh, this uh, uh, software, the name is Digital My System. Now, when I have uh, the health of the, um, after my surgery, I want to change my temporary. So I did a new temporary for this patient and I want to measure, I want to do a new exam for this patient. And now I have this. Uh, new result the signal is always green right but the impact is improved is uh, bigger than before and now this uh, measure is not so uh, so normal <laughs> and i think uh, i have to control something now this patient uh, can bite very well, and this value is uh, uh, bigger than before. And uh, I want to check it. And look at this part of the exam. You have uh, on the pink uh, um, area, this area is uh, for uh, the masseters, and the um, blue, la blue area is for the uh, temporal muscles. So if you have now a bigger area uh, for the masseter, uh, it is. Uh, um, it means that the muscles, the masseter muscles, is uh, working better than before. I think, and I want it. If you work only with temporal muscle, you have pain. Probably sometimes you have pain here, here in this position, and I want it. 
I don't want. I don't want to have a good work from masseteers. Now I finish uh, the preparation of the teeth. I improve the shape of the preparation. And after this part, I take some impression, some final impression. Um, I use the cross mount uh, technique with in uh, the digital workflow. And uh, I, I did it uh, during this therapy. And so you can see the vertical articulator on the screen. You can see on the on the right on the left sorry on the left side of the screen the cross mount digital cross mount. And now I can finish my therapy. And now I don't want to change the position of my mandible. This is the final position. Is it the central relation? Okay. You want to call uh, this position uh, mm, biological position? Okay, but I have a, a device, Tita, that helps me to know if this position is good for my patient. Now, this is the, the simple work during my, my uh, prosthodontic phase. This is the final restoration, right? the upper and the lower jaw. And now this is the final installation of the patient. I have uh, more contact than before. I have a new position of the mandible. I have a new um, state of the muscles. And now I want to check this situation for the final part of my therapy. Now, um, I want to control the, the patient in the, in, during the uh, the time I, the, I follow the patient for uh, every four months for the first year and every six months uh, for uh, the other years. And now this is the final restoration of the patient. Okay, and now I, I did a new design, and you can see on the screen I have a good position of the mandible green signals and I have improved the impact, Migliora, improved, sorry, <laughs> I use the Italian word. Uh, impact is not normal. She is uh, biting very well now. She is working with uh, uh, her teeth in the better way, I think. And you have a good result of, uh, and you can see this a good result on the screen on the exam. I know, if you know this instrument, if you know this device, you know that this is possible. And for me, it's like a guide during my therapy. I can control every part of my therapy. This is the, the first, the beginning, and this is the last uh, um, part of my therapy, the final part of my therapy. Now I control the patient and uh, uh, every six months, I I do, I will do a new exam with Tita. Now I want to change my uh, the situation. I want to change the the, the clinical case. Before I I showed to you the a fixed uh, prosthesis. Now I want to use Tita in uh, in this case in the overdentro. This is an implant retainer over dental. This is the patient. She came in my dental office and uh, she said to me, she doesn't, uh, she can't, uh, she couldn't, sorry, she couldn't uh, eat very well. She, she don't have, uh, she doesn't have a good aspect of the face. She don't want, uh, she don't want to hit this, this situation. For me, the vertical dimension is not good. So I improved the vertical dimension in this case. And I want to show you that the impact, I said before, the impact can change with the, if you change the vertical dimension. It's true, but sometimes when uh, um, you control the patient during the time, the impact is uh, uh, higher than before. And I want to show it during my activity. The first visit for me is always the same. I take some pictures with the patient. I, 
I do a cephalometric exam to the patient. I want to know what is uh, the angle, the mandibular angle. And now I can measure this angle. I want to know if the patient is a mesofacial, brachyfacial, or a dolicofacial patient. Now I can measure, measure this angle. And, uh, sorry, okay. And I want to know the occlusal force of this patient. It's very important. So if I don't know, um, I can't uh, uh, understand very well what is the real force of the patient, I can use Titan. This is the patient, and uh, she has uh, um, old prosthesis in the lower jaw, a whole prosthesis with hopeless teeth in the upper jaw. And now I want to change the situation of this patient. And uh, I did uh, an exam with Tita. And you know, here, the position of the mandible is not good. And you have an uh, impact bigger than the normality. And uh, I don't like it, but it's important because now you have a lower vertical dimension. And now I want to improve the vertical dimension. But this exam is very important, it's fundamental in my daily practice because now I know something more about the patient and I can change my therapy, I can uh, improve my therapy. Okay. In this patient, I, uh, I did four implants in the upper jaw and uh, uh, two implants in the lower jaw. So you can see in the lower jaw how we enter. And uh, in the upper jaw, I am uh, um, I'm making a new overdentum in the upper jaw where you have four implants. And uh, I use a bar to, uh, to join this implant in the upper jaw because I prefer in the upper jaw to have uh, four implants without a pella. But it's not important. This situation are the final of my therapy. Okay, this is the final bar. For me, overdenture is not a B prosthesis, a uh, second uh, choice of prosthesis. I want, I love this type of prosthesis when you have the, the when you can, you can use it during your practice. Now, this is the final prosthesis. Okay. And this is the final exam of the patient. Now I want to, to wait some minutes here. You have, and you can see here, the, um, the cake, the cake of the patient by Titan. This, the first one was at the beginning of the therapy. The second one after some, um, some appointment where I, I did some things on the old prosthesis. And now we have, we have the final situation of the patient. Why? You have a problem here because you, she is working, the patient is working on the temporal muscles and I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to improve um, the work of masseteers and this is very, very important for the stability of the occlusion and the, the good health of the patient. Now, you can see here, and I did something I don't remember now, but it's not important. But the final result, you can see, you have the masseter is in a good uh, working state. Uh, the, the temporal muscles is, uh, are working, yes, but uh, I prefer to have, to see on the screen, a good cake, I, I call it uh, in this way, uh, this image, a good cake for this patient. Now, uh, sorry, I, I finished, but I was so rapid in the last part of my uh, of my um, relation. So I want to show you one more uh, thing. So when I have this ty type of exam for my patient, I want to change what? I look at the patient in the face, and if I have a high level, high level of um, high level of um, impact, I can improve the vertical dimension. Um, Valeria, please, I want to change my screen. Can I do it? Um, what do you mean for changing your screen? So I, I want a new PowerPoint because I want to show you, oh, share with you yeah. different yes, sure. Sorry. Okay. 
because okay i want to uh, come back here uh, please help me Valeria. you here you have a brachyfacial patient no uh, you Valeria, you are an engineer no and for me this data is so difficult to to understand because uh, and it's fundamental you know you know my my work you know my activity you know my daily practice then when i have this type of exam this type of data um, i think is uh, i can change my approach to the patient and this is very important uh, for me and for that i use tita in my daily practice i can control i can change the muscles but i can control the force of the patient and so i think it's not a mistake because i i can find this exam or similar exam in other patients and when i have a brachyfacial patient i have a high level of impact you know that yes yes okay. consider so, also that one of the important thing is that the impact is also related to the vertical dimension so it has a it has a strictly relationship with the shape of a of the face of the patient, but also with the vertical dimension. So, for example, if a patient has lost his vertical dimension, we expect uh, a very high impact. So, an impact of more than 400 is considered as, let me say, normal for a clencher patient, for patient also who has lost their vertical dimension. Why? Because it's quite simple because when we do the calibration with the cutter wall and then we allow the patient to clench on the in maximum anterior patient we are basically the muscle can work really more compared the compare the calibration so the reason is it's in is in that in is in that part of the algorithm of our system so you can define also when you regulate the video um, when you, you you can also define the perfect vertical dimension based on a muscular yeah. activity in order to prevent fracture or overloading. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. I agree with you, and I know. But if you improve the vertical dimension of the patient, you have a lower value of impact. It's true. It's true. But if you have a brachyfacial patient in the future this data change will change so it's very important to have this data for the vertical dimension and for example in this case i can improve the, the vertical dimension of so i need a bigger vertical dimension than before in this patient but in the brachyfacial patient this value is the same high high level of uh, of um, of um, value total value bigger than the normality now uh one minute i want to change i have five minutes more okay i so i want to change the screen sorry okay okay mm -hmm. I want to show you the last thing for the colleague. And for me, the use of this uh, device is uh, fundamental in my daily practice. And I always say that I don't use Titan because um, it's a, a, a tool that I want to, to, to share with the patient. I want to to share with the patient, I want to no, I use Titan because I use Titan because I want a, a measure of my therapy. I want to have a real measure of my therapy, and this is very important for me, very very important. So I want to to have one two more. Okay, here you can see. Do you can can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, now 
So in the first visit, for me, it's very important, it's fundamental to use theta in this situation. I take pictures, yes, it's important, so, so I, I can share with the patient information. I take impression, digital impression, but it's impossible for me to have a first visit without Titan. Because in this workflow, in this digital workflow, I uh, put the vertical dimension registration near uh, um, this exam. And uh, it's so important because if I want in the first visit to have uh, to change the vertical dimension of the patient, to transfer, to share with the dental technician this new uh, vertical dimension, I want to control this vertical dimension immediately, immediately and rapidly with theta. Uh, one more thing. Um, I take a picture of the patient, you know, on the, uh, as you can see on the screen, in this way. I take it with my mobile phone. I don't use reference camera for this photo. I don't want to take a picture, you know, Verona Valeria, because if you take a picture of the patient in this mo at this moment, I can put in the same position the probes in the same position on the face. It's not so important, it's true, it's not so important. But in the same patient, I want to have the same position of the probes during my days. So if I take an exam today and I put the probes in this way, so I touch the muscles, I touch the muscles in the anterior part of the, of the skull and I touch the masseteers, I want the same position of the probes in the future. So I want to have uh, to take this picture uh, with a mobile phone. Are you, uh, do, do you agree, uh, Valeria? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, there's the calibration that can, uh rate uh, some issues uh, with the probe positioning but consider that taking a picture of course can help you even better also to maintain a very similar position the last thing the last thing i forgot i forgot before to to, to tell him to tell it if you have you can take the exam with the whole prosthesis in the mouth this is the first visit. So the patient came in my dental office in in bad way, in this in this manner. So in that terrible situation. But I can, I want to have the exam in this uh, uh, in this case, in this situation with the the theta. If you don't have, if you don't have uh, this kind of prosthesis, because the patient is in this situation and. It, uh, he um, doesn't have a prosthesis or temporary, I, uh, I, I do, uh, or by plane, or I do temporary and I take the exam, the exam in a second time. But I want to have the exam. So if you, if you want to have the exam, you can do it in this situation. You, can't, you can do that. But if you don't have this type of uh, prosthesis, you have to, um, to, 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 to produce something temporary uh, by plane. And uh, you will take the exam in the second, uh, in the second time. So sorry, um, I want to, to share with you this last part and I have, uh, I have finished. Okay, now. This is a prototype for the patient, sorry. This is a prototype for the patient, okay? This, these are two prosthesis, two uh, temporaries. Now, when I have these two temporaries for this patient, it's very important to, to check the occlusion with data. Yes, I, I do, I always do a clinical exam, I control the study, I control the occlusion, uh, I use a uh, paper, uh, color and paper to, to control the number of contacts, but it's so important now to know something more about the masses. So now I take a new exam in this uh, situation, in this case. So, now uh, I can do, I can't do uh, live, uh, uh, live uh, hands training and uh, um, I want to thank you, every, uh, you Valeria, you Roberta, and everybody, and all colleagues 
to follow with me this uh, webinar. And then here I have a uh, last five minutes, 10 minutes for uh, your questions. If you have uh, some questions for me, I wait here and uh, uh, I would like uh, to, to thank you for that. Thank you, Luca. It's, it's some questions are just arriving in the section part. So they ask you, um, do you consider in these cases also the TM joint affection, so the, T, the TM joint uh, interaction or any problem related to the TM joint? No, I don't. Yes, uh, I didn't want. I didn't want to talk about the TM joint. Uh, I know. I I control the joint, TM joint. I control it. I want to to know more. But if you have a good occlusion. If you have a good state of the muscle, you can improve the state of the, the joints. Yeah, I think it's that. And uh, I have a physiotherapist here in my uh, dental clinic, and uh, I uh, work with them to, on the patient to improve the quality of the, of the heating. I, will, I want to improve the quality of the of TM joint. But, I think uh, Tita is not only for that. Uh, yes, I use it, I use it, but I want to know something for all the muscle. If you, your muscles are working well, if your occlusion is good, you have a lot of contacts, and you check everything, and you have a green signals after your exam, you have a good uh, situation of your uh, TM joint. Okay. Another question is, um, so in your treatment plan uh when do you use TM? so you started from the first visit and then what is yes. the protocol yeah for example in the first visit i always use data because i want to begin with an exam electromyography exam first visit well, if I use a biplane because I, I need it, because I think it's correct to use a biplane on this patient, I check and I use theta with, in this phase, when I have a biplane inside the mouth of the patient, right? After this phase, I take the vertical dimension and I share with my group, my dental technician, my, all my group, the uh, position of the mandible center relation, position of the mandible. Now, if I make uh, some temporaries, I will control, will check the uh, temporaries with titan. But I use titan at the beginning of the, my appointment. I don't use titan at the end. And I use titan in, uh, for example, during the, when I, uh, when I check, when I control inside the mouth, uh, the test bar on the implant, and I have a prototype. I use titan with the prototype, and I use titan before uh, the final part of the, my uh, prosthetic workflow, prosthetic workflow, and I use titan at the end because if I have good the result at the end of my therapy, I want to control the patient at the next appointment after six months, after one year, and I want the same level of. Uh, half for the patient. So uh, I, I will use theta in the first visit during my uh, activity. So for example, when I, I insert the protemporaries inside the mouth and the hand, or when I use a biplane or a blend. I don't use theta if I use a, a biplane like uh, uh, like gum, I don't like it. I want to reach the uh, way. Okay, thank you. And uh, okay, the thank you for uh, this uh, this relation. Okay, and uh, another question is that uh, uh, if you have an uh, impact value that is not expected, so you you're finding some strange means in the impact value do you change your treatment plan based on the t on the impact information yes i change my therapy in this way for example if you have a high level of impact i check the vertical dimension if i want to improve i want to 
and a bigger vertical dimension, I improve the vertical dimension and uh, I, do, I do a new exam. But if I have a very, very big uh, impact uh, value, I, for example, I don't want uh, cantilever in the all four. I don't use cantilever. If I have a brachyfacial patient and uh, I have a high level of impact, I don't use a cantilever on this patient in, uh, in implant therapy. Or, for example, um, I don't use uh, uh, in the posterior area uh, festivalic ceramic uh, with a adhesive, uh, adhesive uh, workflow. So, or uh, in Italy, for example, uh, there, there is a, a colleague and uh, he uses only two implants for a whole of four, sorry, all of four, for a Toronto um, branding market prosthesis. And I believe if you have a high level of impact and you have this level after you have uh, um, improved the vertical dimension, you have to um, you, you have to think about a different plane of treatment, a number, a high number, um, higher number of implants, or uh, you have to to improve the, the dimension of the connection, uh, or uh, you have to control very well the situation. Great. So it seems that they don't have other question. They thank you for the. Uh, for this online meeting, it was super exciting, and uh, thank you. Thank and you very well. So, okay, let's see if some questions jumping now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Roberta, and thank you all the group, uh, Titan Group. Thank you, guys. You have thank a new you. question? No, not now. Okay. okay. So we can close the session and uh, thank you again for your availability and uh, for your amazing presentation. It's always a big pleasure for us uh, asking you to do something together. So as always, it's super inter uh, so interesting what you do and how you do it because you are a, full, a fully digital dentist and uh, for our perspective is so, so impressive. And you combined it a good, uh, uh, traditional technique and the the digital one. So it's I think it's the best combination that we can have. So thank you again for sharing your knowledge and the, your experience. It's so so amazing for us, and uh, we will speak soon. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye.